Hello, I'm Ali Langdon. Welcome to A Current Affair. When you get on a bus, most of us don't think about which side we sit. But that simple, split-second decision could have been the difference between life and death for ten wedding guests. The bride and groom will forever mark their anniversary, remembering the loss of their loved ones. You're the closest to heaven that I'll ever be And I don't want to go home right now A private reveal, just the two of them before the ceremony. A moment they'd waited their whole lives for, surreal and dreamy. Their nearest and dearest, some travelling from interstate, all together in the picturesque New South Wales Hunter Valley as Mitch Gaffney and Maddie Edsel became Mr. and Mrs. Every detail carefully planned, the flowers, the cake, and this car, a Volkswagen Beetle. They've been holding on to it for 42 years and finally got it ready for Madeline's wedding. Restored by her dad so they could drive off into the sunset. They were just guests celebrating love. It was a beautiful ceremony. Perfect even. But just as the bride and groom waved off their guests, reflecting on the best day of their lives, a phone call that changed everything. Major incident declared. We have a bus roll over. Multiple patients. Last night, the country silence pierced by sirens and rescue choppers. As help came from everywhere. On board, 35 guests, Maddie and Mitch's closest friends and family. I need all resources allocated to continue. I'm still trying to work out exactly how many patients I have here. As the bus turned onto a roundabout, just minutes into the trip, 10 dead, 25 injured, split between four different hospitals. Some airlifted, as a worried bride was updated on the tragic news. I was pretty much kicking down the door trying to get in the car saying, get me there, I need to go. This is the harrowing scene she would have been confronted with. A 57-seater bus on its side. Leaving those who drive that road every day asking how this could have happened. Can I just tell me how they actually rolled that bus? Incredible. It sounds like you were really surprised that a bus of that size could roll on... on yes, yeah, so really surprised. Yeah. Really surprised. Along the adjoining bushwalking track, locals who wanted to see the drama they heard last night. And what do you make of this major operation then going on here? Oh, it's chaos. When something like this happens, it's, I don't know, it's very hard to comprehend, honestly. So our, all our thoughts are with their families and God bless them all. Sorry. The bus driver, a 58-year-old man arrested by police. His company, Link Bus Lines, said in a statement, our hearts are with everyone involved in this terrible tragedy. It would be inappropriate for us to comment further while the investigation is underway. The groom, Mitch, originally from Melbourne, is a keen AFL player. Some of the Singleton Roosters teammates were on the bus. This afternoon, Devastated players and officials drew strength in numbers as they gathered to support each other at the footy oval. I'm sure that they never would have thought that they would face such a terrible, terrible tragedy in their community like this, yeah. in our community. Singleton Mayor Sue Moore says the tragedy will have a profound impact on the club and small town. The crash scene was a crime scene all day as investigators righted the bus, back on its wheels to search it. Families today travelled to the New South Wales Hunter Valley to identify those who died. This wedding group snap taken just yesterday, but today no one in this picture is celebrating with 10 friends gone. We've chosen not to show their faces while relatives are still learning the awful news. A devastated bride and groom who should be getting on with their honeymoon, instead comforting each other after the best day of their lives became the most tragic. Well, 
for families of the victims, it's been a day of heartache and despair. Steve Marshall joins me from the crash site. Steve, some awful scenes at the local hospitals today. Yeah, good evening to you, Ellie. Today is one of those days you thank your lucky stars. You're not walking in the shoes of the people you meet. Outside the John Hunter Hospital near Newcastle today, we saw people arriving, rushing in to be with people who had been injured in the, in the crash. And in one instance, we saw people arriving to find out whether or not their loved one had even survived the accident. And I need to share with you this moment of this afternoon. We saw a father rush out of the hospital. He had nowhere to turn. He wobbled into the arms of one of our crew members. He sobbed uncontrollably on his shoulder and he said he had just been told that his son did not make it. He couldn't contemplate having to go home and tell his family that they'd lost a son and her brother, Ali. That's just one moment. There's another nine that happened today. There could be one happening right now. And that is why our thoughts go out to those, those families tonight who are struggling with such a deep loss. It's just beyond sad, isn't it, Stephen? We also learn now that the bus driver, 58-year-old Brett Andrew Button, has been charged. That's right. I mean, we talk about families. Spare a thought for the Button family tonight. They're sitting at home wondering whether the actions of Brett Button has triggered and caused Australia's worst road accident in, in decades. Uh, he's been charged with a number of offences, including 10 counts of dangerous driving occasioning death. Now, he's been denied bail. He's a father. He's married. He will spend the night behind bars. He'll appear in court tomorrow, where hopefully We'll find out more details about this tragic, tragic accident, Ellie. Okay, thanks, Steve.